you gorgeous individuals, it's Kav here and today is my four year booktube anniversary. Actually, that's a lie. It's two days before my four year booktube anniversary, but when this video goes up, it will be my four year booktube anniversary. How do you feel about that? That's good feedback. Thank you. Oh, okay, bye. She bit me as I tried to get her in the video, so you all should appreciate the things I do for you. But yeah, when this video goes up, it will be my four-year booktube anniversary, and there is now cat hair flying everywhere, but that is unrelated to everything that's currently happening. In honor of my four-year booktube anniversary, I had to do a special video because you all know how I am. I have to celebrate every little thing that ever happens in my life, and I have done special videos for all my booktube anniversaries in the past, so I have to keep coming up with creative ideas and I couldn't come up with one for this year so I asked you lovely people to help me come up with an idea. You did do so. So I kind of combined some ideas that I got so this wasn't specifically given to me by someone. So basically in this video I'm going to be sharing my top four of four different things. Authors, books, bloggers, and booktubers. And I want to put a little disclaimer in the beginning of this video. With my top four authors and books I am sharing my top four authors and books of all time and you all can probably guess what they are by now because I talk about them all the time but I'm going to again because this is my channel and I can do what I want but with the bloggers and booktubers I'm not sharing my top four of all time because I don't have a top four of all time since I love so many different content creators I'm just sharing the four bloggers and booktubers whose content I'm watching slash reading the most Currently, I don't want this to become like a comparison or a favoritism thing. I want this to be a positive thing. So I wanted to put this disclaimer at the beginning of the video to make sure that you all understand that I'm not trying to do this in a negative light. I'm just saying that right now I'm watching these content creators and reading these content creators work the most. But that doesn't mean that I'm not watching and reading other content creators work and that doesn't mean that I like them any less. Now with that said, let's get into my top four of all these four different things. It's just four, four, four for this video. Let's get into it. I'm going to be starting out with my top four authors and books. My top four authors and books are the same, so I'm going to be combining these two. And again, you all can probably guess what they are, but I'm going to be talking about them anyway because I want to. So here are the books slash authors that I want to discuss in this video. No one is shocked. Firstly, I'm going to be discussing One Diplomat Rishi by Sandhya Menon, and I will also be discussing Sandhya Menon as well. This book, not to be dramatic, changed my life. So to be a little dramatic, it did change my life. I don't think there will ever be words to describe how big of an impact it had on me. You know, when I think about it, my true favorite Sandhya Menon book at the moment is There's Something About Sweetie. But when I think of my favorite books of all time, When Diplomat Rishi is on the list. And that's because of the emotional connection and how meaningful this book was to me in the time that I read it. I read When Diplomat Rishi when I was first starting to fight for representation. I don't know if fight for is the right terminology, but it was when I was kind of getting more active in that side of the community. And that's when I learned about When Diplomat Rishi, and that's when I got the opportunity to read it. It truly changed my life. I've talked about the representation in When Diplomat Rishi countless times, how it felt to me seeing the representation as an Indian American reader reading these books about two Indian American teens and just how wonderful it felt to be seen because it's by an Indian American author. It was just an Indian American party that stands true today. I struggled a lot with my race and my ethnicity growing up and I have the tragic backstory of someone who tried to assimilate to whiteness and who tried to assimilate to American culture and failed really badly because obviously I'm not white. I just had to learn that I wasn't white and I couldn't change that about myself. It doesn't help if you grow up hating your skin. That's not gonna change your skin color. That's not gonna change your background. It's gonna be a lot easier if you learn to love it and it's gonna be a lot more enjoyable if you learn to love it. A big step towards that and a big help towards that is having stories that make you feel seen and heard and that show you that you do deserve a happy ending. And when Nimble Met Rishi was one of the first stories, if not the first story, that did that for me. 
And now to talk about Sandhya Menon, who I love and adore with my whole entire heart. I've met Sandhya like four or five times in person now. I've met her so many times. I have so much love for her for so many different reasons. When, when Diplomat Rishi was coming out, I was like one of the first to jump on the promo bandwagon. So Sandhya and I started to get to know each other through that. So now we actually have a connection and a relationship. Because of that, I know her a little bit more on a deeper level and it is so wonderful to be able to have that connection with her. It is so obvious to me how much she truly cares about her readers and truly giving them content that they will enjoy. And of course she's an extremely talented writer and that's one of the reasons I love her work, but I feel like that's true for all of these authors and that's why these are my favorite books so I don't even need to talk about that aspect of it. What I truly love about her is just how kind she is and how it's so obvious how much she cares about her readers on a deeper level. It is so obvious when you see her in person how kind she is. Her energy just permeates through the room. You can't be in a bad mood when Sandhya Menon is beside you because she just lights up the room. I've gotten to interview her, I think, twice for my channel now, and they were two of the best experiences I ever had. Our second interview ran so long. We started it before her event, but it ran so long that we then had to finish it after her event because of just how much fun we were having talking, and I think that just goes to show how wonderful she is. It was truly just us having fun. I respect and admire everything she stands for. I respect what her books are, but I also just respect and admire what a wonderful person she is. I'm just really grateful to know her as an author and as a person, and she's so lovely and just really wonderful. Next up, I'm gonna be talking about More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera and also by extension, Adam Silvera. More Happy Than Not truly is a book that I read almost right after I joined the community. I think I read it in the first few months after I joined the book community and this book, fuck. One of the blurbs says gut-wrenching and I think that's the most accurate way of describing it. This is truly one of the most painful books you could ever read, but it's also one of the most healing books I've ever read. I did a video a while ago with my horrible friend Gailies where we talked about books that healed us. More Happy Than Not was one of the books on my list. Her reaction when I said that this book healed me was just incredible. I know it seems ironic to anyone who has read the book because this is a painful book. It was also what I needed. I've read this book multiple times and weirdly I found that I don't reread books often and this is one of the few books I've reread. I reread it when I'm depressed which might seem counterintuitive because this is a horribly depressing book. I read it because in a weird way it also gives me hope. I feel like it's another thing in the idea of being seen but for me it's more than that. It's not just being seen. It's something bigger than that that I can't even describe in words and that's why I'm struggling to explain this because I don't have words to describe what this book means. All of Adam Silvera's stories are brilliant. He is one of the most talented authors out there and he is also one of the bravest authors out there. I mean, More Happy Than Not is his debut novel and it's the story of a gay Puerto Rican teen in a poor neighborhood who's dealing with issues with his sexuality and his father killed himself and he's going through depression and Adam Silvera was like, this is the book I want to go with. All of his stories are just so brave and so honest and so vulnerable and I have so much respect for him for that. I think the vulnerability of this story is part of what makes it so powerful and maybe powerful is the word I'm looking for. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but this story healed me. I don't know how else to explain it. It might seem ironic, it might seem counterintuitive, but it's still true and it might seem really weird if you've read any of Adam Zolvera's books because they all break you. Maybe it did break me, but it broke me in the way I needed to be broken to be healed. There are very few stories that have the power to do that. This is like one of two stories in my entire life that has done that. The only other one that's ever done that is The Mess Education of Cameron Post. So good job. Adam Silvera. But I guess I'll transition to talking about Adam Silvera because if I talk about this book too much, it'll 
be too much for me emotionally. I mean, I kind of talked about him a bit in how brave and just how talented of an author he is, which is all true. But again, he's another author who's just super kind. All of these authors are really kind. They're great people. I've met Adam Silvera like countless times. I think like something like six or seven times. I've met him too many times. He is just so wonderful. You know, he truly is such a brilliantly brave author. When you see how honest he is just on his social media as well, I mean, in his books, it reaches another level, but also on his social media, the guts he has to talk about some of the things he does. I mean, he's one of the people who inspires me to one, be willing to tell my story, to two, be as active as I am in fighting for representation and in being as active and being as participatory as I am in this movement of the diverse book community stuff. I have a lot of respect and admiration for him as a person and as an author. He truly inspires me in so many different ways and he is so kind. He also has so much love and respect for booktubers, which is another thing I really admire because there are a lot of authors who don't do that not to start drama but Adam Silvera is one of the people who like goes above and beyond to have so much respect and admiration for booktubers which I think is beyond incredible when I reflect back on experiences of meeting him I just remember how kind he was each time even the first time I met him I shared like this story of how I finished more happy than not in the bathroom because I just couldn't put it down and it was such a wonderful and just uplifting experience for me. I just felt so happy after I talked to him. He is just such a wonderful and kind human being and I have so much respect and admiration for him and for his honesty and his vulnerability and he's so good. I think he deserves the whole entire world. He's so good and that's what I have to say. <laughs> Next up I'm gonna talk about Cryer's War by Nina Varela and also about Nina Varela. So if you weren't around in the latter months of 2019, I kind of fell very deeply in love with Cryer's War. <laughs> All of my videos in October were dedicated to Criers War. I had a Criers War signing vlog, and then I had my interview with Nina. I had a video on why I loved Criers War. Also, at the beginning of the month, I had a video where my favorite authors chose my TBR, and Nina was one of those authors. So technically, Criers War was also involved in that. And I was actually also a crier from a Criers War for Halloween last year. So. I really love this book. Cryer's War kind of took me by storm. I quite frankly did not expect to love it as much as I did. And that's not because I have like any underestimation of Nina's abilities. It just wasn't a book I went into like expecting to become a favorite. I thought I would really enjoy the book. You know, on Twitter, Nina is like, a Twitter gay. That's who she is. So when you see the difference between her Twitter personality versus her writing in a book it is kind of jarring to see her on twitter versus like her writing in a book that being said crier's war is a brilliant piece of literature i don't even know where to begin with this book i started writing a book after crier's war that was completely inspired by crier's war so that's kind of the impact it had on me it was just everything i needed in those months. Like the way I started acting after I read Cryer's War resembled like me in middle school after I'd first read Cassandra Clare's books. That's kind of how obsessed with it I became. So it really truly impacted me in a very powerful way. And you know, I don't know why. I can't tell you why. I mean, it does have lesbians, which is one powerful aspect of it. The characters are also coded as people of color. We love lesbian people of color. That's not the only reason I love it. It's also about fighting colonization and it's enemies to lovers. It just has everything I love in a book, which is great, but there's just something about it. There are some books that you just fall in love with, and this was one of them for me. I can tell you that the writing was great, the characters were great, the plot was great, the lesbians were great, like I can tell you all of that, but you know I say that about a lot of books I read because quite frankly I read a lot of great books since I know my reading tastes now. It was just a book I fell in love with. 
and quite frankly that's what it is for this one it was a book i fell in love with as for nina i have so much love for nina she is the absolute best. I am so determined to get a Cryer's War tattoo and to get her to draw a butterfly for me and I will do so. Nina is also so incredibly kind and she cares so much about young writers and young readers and it's so obvious. She has a horrible dog who I absolutely love. <laughs> Again, I love her honesty as well. She is so honest on her social media and I love that. She is so kind and sweet she is just really great and she's really relatable and she's also another author who i know better we are friends i mean i just have again so much love and respect and admiration for her i admire her as an author but i also just admire her as a person i admire that she cares so much about young writers i admire that she is so willing to be vulnerable and honest on her social media i admire that She's also willing to take care of herself and talk about that on social media as well. I admire that she is just such a caring person. That really bleeds through. You know, when I saw her in person, it was so obvious how caring she was. That energy permeated through that event. Adam Silvera introduced me to Nina at Yal West. He was like, hey Kav, you like gay stuff, you should meet Nina. I'm honestly, truly so thankful for that because I'm thankful to know her and I'm so fucking thankful to have Cryer's Word in my life. I'm very thankful. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling right now. And now I'm gonna be talking about all of these books by Cassandra Clare. So I'm gonna be talking about the whole Shadowhunter Chronicles, but I didn't want to bring the entire shelf of books over here. That seemed a little excessive. So I just brought my box out of the Infernal Devices. I love Cassandra Clare. I love the Shadowhunter Chronicles. That is not news to anyone. I have so many videos of it. For my two-year booktube anniversary, I did a video on how the Shadowhunter Chronicles saved my life. I feel like that becomes more true with every passing year. These books have continued to heal me throughout my darkest days. I run a book club with some of my friends called Bookbound Society and our theme for April is Comfort Reads. Unsurprisingly, the first books that came to my mind were The Infernal Devices. I recently read Train of Gold and did a whole video series about that as well throughout March. Reading that book felt like being home. When I think about middle school and those years of my life, I have so many horrible memories, but the few good memories I have are all tied to these books. They're all about when I escaped into these stories and these stories truly do feel like home for me. When I was at that age, they felt like an escape, but now when I read them, they feel like coming back home and they feel like returning to safety. I believe that they are exquisite. I believe that Cassandra Clare is an exquisite author and that she improves with every single book she writes. I know The Mortal Instruments are not the greatest books in the world. I'm not denying that, but The Infernal Devices is a brilliant trilogy. I think The Dark Artifices is great. I think The Last Hours is going to be exquisite as well because Chain of Gold was brilliant. I truly think Cassandra Clare is a brilliant author. These books mean so much more to me than just a really great series by a super talented author. These books mean my life. That's a pretty big deal to me. Just to me personally, that's kind of a big deal. I've talked about them a lot, so I'm not gonna talk about these the most in this video, but when I think about my four favorite books, of course they have to be on the list. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about Cassandra Clare, because I don't talk about her as much. I have also had the opportunity to meet Cassandra Clare twice in person, and I'm only gonna count the second time, because I was a baby the first time, so it doesn't count. Meeting her in person the second time was the single greatest experience of my life. I said that laughing, but it's honestly probably probably true. Cassandra Clare is a really big name author, so she, one, doesn't have to care about her readers, and two, doesn't have to care about the diversity and representation in her books, but she cares about both. When I met her at BookCon in 2018, I saw both of those things firsthand. So I wrote Cassandra Clare a letter that year about how much Anna Lightwood meant to me, because if I'd written her a letter about everything, then I actually have written her a book as long as Queen of Air and Darkness and she told me to email her after I read every exquisite thing. She didn't need to do that. She didn't need to tell some like messed up 16 year old kid to email her about this. But she did anyway because she cared. She cared that I saw myself in this character that she wrote. I like came out of that sobbing and I don't cry in front of other people ever. 
But the fact that I came out of that thing like sobbing was huge. I was a mess. It is so obvious how much Cassandra Clara cares about her readers. There's no doubt in my mind how talented of a writer she is. And there's also no doubt in my mind how much she cares about her readers and how much she cares about doing justice to her stories and doing justice to the populations she's representing in her books. That's what means more to me. Cause yeah, her books are great. They're well written. But she as an author means so much more than that. There was a day a couple weeks ago where some people got really salty about how many queer characters there are in Chain of Gold. And Cassandra Clare was like, there were gay people in the 1900s. And that was her take on it. She was like, yeah, there were gay people in the 1900s. I don't know what you want me to say. I have love and respect and admiration for her. And she is my single biggest inspiration in the world. I just love her. A lot. I love her books a lot. I'm very grateful for them. You know, thinking back on this, I didn't realize this until I sat down to talk, but I'm so grateful that I've had the opportunity to meet the authors of all of these books. Beyond that, I'm grateful to have a deeper relationship with two of these four authors and to be able to be recognized on site by three of these four authors. Cassandra Clare doesn't recognize me on site, but the other three do. That's pretty incredible. And obviously I didn't join the book community to like be recognized on site by authors. But when a book means a lot to you, to be able to tell that to the author of the book and to be able to build a relationship with the person who created that story is pretty fucking cool. And I'm so grateful to have that opportunity and to have had that opportunity with these people. That's really cool. Now I'm going to be moving on to the four bloggers I am gonna talk about in this video. First up, I'm going to be talking about May over at Forever and Everly. May is my sweet summer child. I don't know why I said that. That is not an accurate way to describe May at all. They're my demon child. May is an incredibly talented writer and I don't think she gets enough credit for that. They truly are such an important voice in this community. And again, I don't think they get enough credit for that. That frustrates me so much. I don't follow a ton of bloggers. I am a booktuber, so I follow more booktubers than I do bloggers. That's just the honest truth. May is one of the few bloggers who if I see a post by them in my inbox, I will immediately click it. That's how excited I get to read their content. She is such a talented writer and her posts are just so well structured as well. I love the layout of their blog. I don't know if that's how bloggers talk about it because I don't know how bloggers speak. I love like the visual layout of her blog. I truly think that her voice needs to be heard by more people in this community. They are just so well-spoken and eloquent. She's also really funny. So while she does write about important stuff sometimes and she does make posts that need to be heard, they also have some pretty funny jokes in there. But I don't want them to know that I think they're funny. I just want them to be more loved and respected by this community. They do so much for the community, blogging and booktube alike. She goes out of her way to support so many other content creators. It frustrates me so much that the same isn't given to her, especially with the fact that they are so talented and they are so good at what they do. So go follow May. That's your homework for tonight. Next up, I have Gay Lees over at The Bookish Actress. Can't believe my ex-girlfriend is on this list. Gay Lees is also, unfortunately, a very talented writer. They are also very good at what they do. One thing I want to say about Gay Lees is that I love that she also weaves in non-bookish content into her posts. She sometimes discusses music and movies as well, which I appreciate as someone that likes music and movies as well. They also do discuss some really important content as well on their blog. I have read a lot of Gay Lisa's posts and I have cried before reading them because of how talented of a writer they are. I can't believe she might watch this and find out that I've cried reading her writing. She'll never let me live that down. <laughs> G 
she's truly one of the most talented writers I've ever known in my entire life. They are just, again, so eloquent. While we do agree on most things, there have been a few times where we disagree. I will always understand and respect what they say in the end because they are so eloquent. She's just a really talented writer. She's so good at writing. She's so good at writing that she can make you cry. So go follow them as well. That's some more homework for you. Next up, I have Shri at Sun and Chai. Shri is one of the bravest people in this community. I do not have the guts she does. She talks about the topics that need to be talked about that so few people talk about in this community. That's not to say that other people aren't talking about them because they are. I don't want to be one of those people that say that people aren't discussing important topics because they are. There is also, I think, a lot of fear in bringing those up because a lot of people that do discuss them get backlash and she has faced that before, but she perseveres and I have a a lot of respect and admiration for that and for her in general. Her willingness to be just so honest about these tough subjects is just so wonderful. Again, she's also a talented writer and she's also very eloquent. And I could keep saying that about everyone on this list, but I just also want to point out how brave she is for the topics she discusses because I also think that that needs to be heard and that needs to be said and that she needs to get more respect for that and just more respect for the fact that most of what she says is also true, if not all of it. She makes the points that no one else wants to make. I also love a lot of the things that she brings up on her blog as well, because she makes a lot of good points on her Twitter, but I also love how she carries them into her blog and the format in which she does. I also love how she uses her blog to highlight other content creators as well, which I think is a really cool thing to do. She is another blogger who, if I see a post by her in my inbox, I feel this like compulsive need to immediately click on it because I just have so much love and respect and just admiration for her as a content creator and as a person and she is just so great. I think that she deserves so much more respect and admiration from this community and it pisses me off that she doesn't get it. I have so much frustration because these people deserve more love. Tree is so talented and so eloquent and so well spoken. Go follow her. Some more homework! And lastly for bloggers, I have Maha over at Sunshine and Books. Maha is another great blogger. I think of these bloggers, she might be the one I've been following for the longest. And she's taken a few hiatuses, but she's come back. She's made her return. I love her posts. I like that her posts are a bit more low-key. I like that they just feel relaxing. The title of her blog is Sunshine and Books, and I feel like her posts are sunshiny. I feel like that's a good way to describe them. They truly are sunshiny. Maha as a person is very sweet and very kind and that translates perfectly to her blog. She does weave in some things that aren't 100% bookish into her blog. She weaves in some things that are a little more self-care themed into her blog and I appreciate that as well. I think that she again is a talented writer and you know she's not from America but yet she writes her blog in English and I think that that deserves real props because she's really good at it. That in itself should convince you to follow her because anyone whose first language isn't in English but then writes a blog regularly in English is incredible. And so honestly, Maha props to you for doing so. Again, I have a lot of love and respect for her as well. And so go follow her. Some more homework. And now finally, I'm going to be discussing the four booktubers I'm going to be talking about in this video. When I thought of four booktubers to recommend, Rhiannon was the first name that came to my mind. I watched every single one of their videos. I love the videos they make. I feel like one, they're so original and two, they also make really important content. I think that they are one of the most eloquent persons I have ever met in my entire life. I think that they are one of the most kind people I have ever met in my entire life. I also love the originality of their content. I know I mentioned that, but I need to mention it again because their content is so original. They bring such a unique take. To booktube and i really appreciate that they also include some really important videos in their video selection and i also really appreciate that like i said i basically watch every single one of their videos because of how much i love their content i cannot get enough of it i cannot get enough of them i love them so much as a person i mean i'm friends with them and i adore them i'm friends with all the people i'm talking about because i love them all i adore them as a person i also adore them as a content creator they are such 
a talented content creator. I fucking love them so fucking much. They're so talented and so incredible. Yeah, that's what I have to say about Rhiannon. Next up, I have Marta over at Stella E Thoughts. Marta is actually one of my best friends, so this is kind of cheating, but this is my channel, so I can do what I want. Marta recently got back into booktubing after a break that I personally think was far too long, and I am really, really proud of them. They are a great content creator. English is not their first language, they are from Portugal, but yeah, they are doing such a great job at booktubing in English. I have so much respect for anyone that is doing that, that's making content in a language that isn't their first language. I think that they're doing a really great job with their content, and I just think that anyone who is starting booktube or starting anything new, it takes a lot of guts to do so. And I have a lot of respect for that, and I have a lot of respect for Marta, especially because I have been bugging them for ages to start a booktube channel, so I feel like it would be wrong of me to not mention them on this list because I kind of got them into this mess in the first place. But they are truly a wonderful content creator, and I truly am really proud of them for starting their channel again. And they're on top of their game. They're putting out more videos than me. They're just like throwing these videos out. Yeah, so I'm really proud of them, and I think you should subscribe to them because they're a really great person, they are so sweet, and they're also a good content creator, so you should subscribe to them as well. Next up, I have Brody at A2 Brody. Brody is the sweetest bean, and I love them so much. I feel like I could say a similar thing about Brody that I said about Rhiannon, because some of the things I love about Brody are very similar to what I love about Rhiannon. Their content has such an original take. They talk about a lot of important topics as well. Another thing I love about Brody is also that they do so much work to support other content creators. That is so incredible and I have so much respect for them for doing so. Brody is just the sweetest bean and they are a really great content creator. I'm gonna say this again, it pisses me the fuck off how underrated they are. Like it truly pisses me off how underrated they are because their content is so important and it's so good. Like, yes, they've made really important videos that deserve to be seen and heard and respected, but also just their fun videos are so good and they're original and they also deserve to be just seen and enjoyed. I really enjoy their content so much. I'm friends with Brody too and I love them as a person. You know, during Booknet Fest, Brody was my photographer and I think they deserve to be on this list just for everything they endured during those two days. As a content creator, I truly do just really love and respect Brody so very much. Y'all should subscribe to them because they're the good bean. And lastly for booktubers, I have Miriam from Miriam Read Sometimes. So Miriam is the most recent of these subscriptions of mine. From what I've seen of her recently, she primarily makes videos of being destroyed by books that break us, and honestly that is so relatable. The first video I watched of Miriam's was her most popular, which is the one of like crying over the infernal devices for like 30 minutes or something, and it was the most relatable 30 minutes of my entire life. She's great. It just brings such a smile to my face when I watch her videos. So I also highly recommend you subscribe to her because she is another wonderful content creator as well. So with that said, those are all the content creators slash authors slash books I had to chat about in this video. But I guess that means it's time to talk about what being on booktube for four years has meant to me. So. I guess I should do that. So there's kind of a lot going through my mind. There's just a lot happening up here. I love this community. I love so many of the people I've met here. I've met some of my best friends here. This community has given me so much of my life. Booktube became my identity and that was for good reason. And you know, if it was something else that might have torn me down, like Booktube saved me in so many ways. Books have saved me time and again and Booktube has saved me time and again. I wouldn't give it away for the world. But I'm also in a really, really complicated time in my life right now, so going forward is really fucking scary as well. I wouldn't have given up the last four years on booktube for anything. I would have given up a lot of other parts of the last four years, but not this part, because this part gave me everything that saved me, and for that I will always be grateful no matter what comes next. I didn't mean for that to sound like a goodbye. I feel like it sounded like a goodbye, but also I love the book community. So that's fun. Okay, my camera is about to die. I really do have to end this video. So with all of that said, I hope you enjoyed this video as much of a disaster as it was. I'm a 
disastrous mess right now and i hope you all are staying safe please stay indoors if you have the ability to and i also want to say if any of you all are working on the front lines if you're a doctor a nurse or if you are working in a grocery store or anything thank you for your service i hope you all are staying safe and i hope you all are taking care of yourselves and your mental health with that that is all for this video thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like and subscribe because that stuff makes me happy go ahead and comment down below anything i don't really know what you should comment down below comment down below your favorite thing about the book community let's do that as usual all my social media and my goodreads will be in the description below if you'd like to follow me anywhere else thank you all so much for watching i hope you're having a lovely day night wherever you are please remember that you're a beautiful news of the world and i'll see you soon for a brand new video goodbye